This afternoon I have my third and what I think is going to be my last work coach meeting for Universal Credit. Because I am on the transitional year, uh, because I used to be on working tax credits, I'm self-employed, I got the protected start-up year, so they kind of had to take me on. But that is up in August, and as far as I am aware, I will not be eligible for universal credit afterwards, and that's primarily because of the, the savings that I have. It's more than they allow, but they make um, allowances when you're on the protected start-up year. One of the other things is that when you're on the start-up year, you get slightly different rules, so you're not forced to take a job. You still have a minimum income floor, but they make allowances that you don't have to reach it. To be honest with you, when I've been in there waiting for my meeting and I've seen other people going in and not meeting their goals, they just get told if you don't meet your goals, we, you know you'll get into trouble and people go oh yeah and then they just they just go so I don't know how strict the system actually is people who are not meeting their obligations on standard universal credit don't seem to care but it's really frustrating because when you're self-employed there is no regular work every month is a different income um, and that might be because your work is seasonal. It might just be like mine where you don't know what comes in each month. All that really matters at the end of the day is over the course of the year, did you earn enough to pay all your bills? Now, I, as well as having a lower income, I've also reduced all my outgoings. So it means that although I have a lower income, my income is more than my outgoings. So I'm fine with that. My monthly income is lower than the minimum income floor that you see demands. Um, but I don't care because I'm earning enough to live on. And it also allows me to put a little bit back into savings. I, I've been able to open a, uh, a self-employed pension. I've been able to open a stocks and shares ISA. So I can't be doing that badly this year. So for the start-up year, it's not such a big deal. They are... They seem to be less strict from where I'm coming from. Um, it's like they're just waiting for me to do the year and then they can chuck me off, which is great because if it gets to August and they put me on the normal system, it's a useless system to me. But it's also uh, quite complicated in the way that they process how much they give you. So this morning I am also doing my monthly um, report back to UC for my claim. So there are certain things that I can claim for. I have to input my income, I can put my expenses in, and it'll work out how much it pays me. It's a really confusing system, and I've set up a, on my one of my spreadsheets how much I think each month I'm going to get, because I put my claim in on the 20th, on the 23rd, it notifies me how much I'm going to get, and then I get paid on the 27th. And I always try to work it out, and I normally get it wrong, because the system is just so bizarre. If you're not good with numbers, you're absolutely stuffed. You might as well just wait and see what happens on the day that it tells you how much you're going to get. Now, the rates have just gone up. I can't remember off the top of my head what it is, but I will put it there so you can see it. So I'm going to do my monthly claim today and I'm going to talk you through all my numbers how I think that's going to look and then I'll let you know what I actually get now because of the way the system works um, and because of the way because of the like the savings that I have they take away most of the money so it's a token amount you look at the figures at the top and you think Blimey, you're rolling in it. Why on earth would you need to work? You see so generous. And then when you see everything that it takes off afterwards, it's like, I mean, it's like the housing allowance. Um, I don't even think of it as a housing allowance because A, it wouldn't even cover, it only covers like less than two thirds of my rent. And B, they take it away from me anyway, because when you look at your income and how that is divvied up, and then you look at 
how they penalise me for having savings. Um, because I don't think universal credit likes to encourage a savings mentality. It will um, punish you for having savings over £6,000. And I don't think that's a very good way to teach people on lower incomes to save money. If you're being told as long as you keep your savings under this, you'll be okay. But that savings amount isn't even an emergency fund. They reckon you now need six months emergency savings to cover your, your bills because that's how long it can take to get out of a, out of a hole. And that 6,000 wouldn't cover most people's six months of basic bills. So they don't really encourage the mentality of you should have those emergency savings in place to cover you if something happens because UC isn't going to get you out of it, that's for sure. Anyway, so I'm going to do my figures now and I'm going to walk you through what it looks like for me this month. I've had a good income month. So I'm expecting very little, well, very little from UC is what it is. Uh, occasionally I've had months where it's better but usually the better months have been because like I've been topping up my pension and they class pension payments as a as an expense uh, the ISA is classed as savings but for me my savings haven't changed since I started my claim I've just been moving money around between accounts uh, so it's basically the same amount of money um, but yeah, the, the pension, putting pension payments in is classed as an expense and they don't class pensions as savings because you can't get to them. So if you are on UC, particularly for that protected year, and you have a private pension or whatever pension you have, and you want to get as much money as you can out of UC, if that's your mentality, stick your money into your pension and you'll get some of it back in expenses. Anyway, so right, so I'm going to move on and do these numbers for you, and I'm going to put it up on screen, and you can see kind of how it works. So here you can see my income for the calendar month for UC, and your calendar month will be dependent on when your claim was approved and when you started, so it'll be from that first date for a month and then it'll roll on every single month. So this is how it's broken up. Now when you do your income on on the system, it'll just ask you for one amount for income. So my income is broken up into all the different things that I earn from that I class as business. So we have the cleaning work, there's banking interest, there's the money I've earned from doing surveys and market research, there's some vintage item, items on there. Now I sell on vintage for business and personal. So when I'm selling items that are business related, that'll be very often things that are given to me for me to sell or items that I have made and occasionally I put one or two on vintage. When I've sold personal items, like maybe I've had a route through my, my wardrobe or my jewellery and I just wanted to have a clear out of my personal things I wouldn't class that as business because they're personal items are having a, a declutter so business wise it's only nine pounds the personal stuff also wasn't that much um, you know, about a tenner or something uh, MEU that is the um, the medical trials that's what I earned, um, and I've already done a post about that because I only earned um, for doing screenings because I didn't get through to the actual uh, medical trial. Uh, donations on coffee, that's people who've donated who watch my channel. Um, thank you for that, everybody. And then we have YouTube earnings, which is predominantly money earned through people watching ads from watching my posts, but also sometimes I get a super thanks as well. So this calendar month has been 162 pounds and five pence so that all gets lumped into one income amount and then expenses you have to break up into um, different items so expenses for me include petrol for driving to in, in my case it'll be one of my cleaning jobs which I drive to the others I walk to and also my trips to the medical center to do the screenings 
I also have fees on Etsy and any postage where I've posted items I've sold. I also split my mobile phone bill half, half personal, half business. So half of that is on there. This month I've bought my business insurance. Um, I went with a new business um, company, a new insurance company this month and my insurance has gone way down. So that was £69.25 for the business for the year. Um, there's also fees on PayPal because when people pay me on coffee and it comes through PayPal, PayPal charges me a fee for that. And of course, there is the pension of £192, which is classed as an expense, as I've already mentioned. So that leaves me with a take home pay of £1,108.97. And now I'm going to show you. Um, how that appears in the calculations for UC. And these are my calculations. Um, I've just put my claim in for the month, so in a few days I will have their email telling me how much I'm actually going to get in a week's, about a week's time after that. And then I'll know if I got these calculations right or not, because it seems that every month I do this, I seem to get them wrong. So let's have a look at those. So this is how the claim is broken up in terms of what they can potentially give you. So I've already mentioned about how the personal allowance has just gone up. So the personal allowance is now £398.45 per month. There is a housing allowance of £399.98. Now the housing allowance does not cover your housing. It's um, an amount towards it. Um, on top of that, I also get a transitional year protection. That is an amount of money that is given to compensate for the fact that you're not on working tax credits anymore. I don't really understand this because I'm getting more money from UC than I was from working tax credits. So I don't quite know how that works. Um, but anyway, so that then gives you a total possible payment of like a, a ceiling payment of £989.42 per month if I made no income. That is potentially what I could get. Um, my take home pay, as I said, was uh, £1,108.97. And for every pound that you earn, UC deducts 55 pence off your initial top amount of £989.42. So that means because I've earned that money myself, I lose £609.40. I also get a reduction for savings. I can't remember exactly what the pence per, um, pence per pound is for savings, but I lose £174 per month for savings, which gives me um, a total potential payment from UC for this month of £201.02, £2, which once added to the take-home pay that I've declared above, gives me a total income of £1,309.99. With regards to that £174 for savings, when I was accepted onto Universal Credit, I had a letter saying they were capping the amount of savings that they would include in my claim at 16000 So that £174 per month is based on savings of 16,000. So if you have savings of over 6,000, um, hopefully this will give you an idea of um, how much they might take, but also uh, it depends on, I think it probably depends on your individual circumstances. Um, if you have, I don't know, say 10,000 pounds of savings, um, they'll only be counting 4,000. If you had £50,000 worth of savings, I don't know whether they just turned down your claim. The thing about the transitional year is that it is protected, which means that 
kind of almost regardless of your circumstances and provided that you can prove you are gainfully self-employed by that they mean that they're treating you as if you're in a startup year that's why it's called the startup year and so it's it's imagining that um, your self-employment has only just begun now I've been self-employed for 12 years but they take you back to day one and say right so for this transitional year we're going to pretend that you're a brand new business um, and now you've got a year to prove that you can make this work and that's basically how it works so I hope that makes that little bit clear um, but obviously once you make your claim and if you're on a protected transitional year I think you're pretty much guaranteed to get in provided you can prove that that your self-employment is worth working on for the year. If you can prove that you're doing your best to find work, that you're advertising, that whatever method you use to get your work um, has the potential to succeed. And for me, being self-employed is theoretically my fashion design business, but because things have been difficult since COVID, and I haven't wanted to go back to a full-time job. That's why I've added all the side hustles in. And when I went in for my interview, I said, right, well, this is my business. This is what's happened to my business. But these are all the other things that I'm doing on top. And these all count towards my self-assessment. So they all count as me being self-employed. So all those little, little jobs that I do that I showed in that first section where all my income streams are lumped into one, that counts as me being gainfully self-employed. So remember that if you are, if you are self-employed, if you're doing this year, if your income isn't great on your self-employed, if you can't prove that you're going to do better in the year, add some add some side hustles, um, take up a cleaning job, do surveys and market research, and if you can demonstrate that you are trying to increase that and make it bigger and better, then that will go into the same pot as your self-employment. Just thought I'd add that. Okay, so it's been a few days since I did my own calculations. And I think in normal times they would have been correct. However, there have been some changes in that because the personal allowance for universal credit has gone up, they're taking it away in other places. So I'm going to put those screens of numbers back on and show you where things have changed. So let's have a look. Okay, so let's have a look at these numbers. So, as I said, the standard allowance has now gone up to £393.45. Um, it also looks like the housing has gone up. I'm just going to have a look at my original figures. So the housing allowance was £399.98. That's gone up to £525. Um, the transitional protection, which was for the, the protected startup year because I had transitioned from working tax credits to UC, was £190.99. That is now £41.26. So let's have a quick look at the explanation for that. Um, total uh, transitional protection. Your transitional protection payments have been decreased. This is because you are now being paid more universal credit. So I get more you see they take it off the transitional protection the housing has gone up and yet the standard monthly amount has gone down from £984.42 to £959.71 so they've increased the allowance they've increased the housing but you're actually worse off. There we go. Everything else remains the same. So whereas I would have before received 201 pounds and two pence, I this month 
will now be £175.78. Now, for me, I'm not going to complain about that because I'm in a very different situation to many universal credit claimants. But if I was financially living on the edge, that reduction, which is 30 odd pounds, I think, could be catastrophic. That 30 pounds might be enough to pay your gas for the month at this time of year, or it may be enough to supplement a food bank um, parcel that you get or whatever else it is, it might be the £30 you need to get to work every month. I don't know. But, so that that's how it looks for me now. Uh, it looks like I'm going to be worse off every month. And I don't quite understand how that happens because they're increasing the allowance to put that in line with inflation. I am presuming that if you are not on the protection, then this wouldn't, this wouldn't make a difference. Your money would go up. But if you are on the protected year and you are struggling, this could be problematic. This morning I am on my way to what I think might be my last meeting with my work coach for Universal Credit. And I say I think it is my last because my one year of transitional protection from working tax credits ends in August, September. And they aren't going to renew it, I know this, because I have too much in savings for the standard universal credit system. Which is fine because you think you have to jump through a lot more hoops when you're, when you're on the regular system. Whereas transitional protection is a little bit more lenient. But you will have seen from the post that was before this that the amount of money has changed which as I said for me isn't catastrophic but if you're in need of that money and you're on the protected year that might be an issue so just bear that in mind if you're about to start your claim or your claim has just begun Now the chronology of this post is a bit out because right at the beginning of this vlog I said today I'm going to be having what I think is my last meeting but since I made that they've changed the date three times and they kept giving me dates I couldn't do like the weekend who knew the DWP worked at the weekend I can't do weekends because of the cleaning work. There's plenty of days in the week they can do it. So they kept changing it and changing it. And I'm also seeing someone different. And I think it's the lady I first saw when I had my meetings to start my claim and she said, you've got no chance of getting universal credit because of your savings. I mean, the only thing they're likely to say is you're not earning enough, but I'm earning more each month than I spend, so theoretically I'm earning enough. It's just not enough for them, for what they consider to be the minimum amount of money I need every month, which I find weird because they've never asked me what my outgoings are. So they don't know what I spend every month.
they only know about the expenses I put in for my business because that's all they ask for because it's about self-assessment they were pushing me to try and get more cleaning work they wanted me to take on like a regular cleaning job where I would be on some kind of payroll which doesn't work for me purely in terms of flexibility but also because I don't want to do it and that's one of the reasons I've been working harder on side hustles and improving on those is so that I don't have to increase the cleaning work I do anyway so as you can see I've got the brolly up the rain's not horrific but it is raining but this is good exercise for me. I have to walk to the next town. It's 34 minutes each way. meeting is over and I am walking home now. I went fine, happy with the income as things are um, and I talked to her about my claim coming to an end and she said she wasn't sure because they can't see all my information. So I explained the savings situation and, uh, and I said, I thought, you know, as far as I'm concerned, they're going to cut me off. Uh, my end of year is the 21st of August and um, so what she's done, because she's not sure whether my claim is going to continue, They've booked me in for one more meeting, which is a few days before my claim is supposed to end. Because she says, they put you onto, onto the UC. Then I must hit minimum income floor every month regardless. Which I think is a bit daft because they don't tailor it to your circumstances, so... I don't need to earn that amount of money every month to be as comfortable as I want to be at the moment. But I would have to do that. Um, and I said to her about the hours, because I already do like loads of hours, so I don't worry about the hour situation. And I thought I'd read that the hours had gone from 15 to 18 in the update. But she said it's 30. It has to be the equivalent of a full-time job for hours and minimum income floor. So, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm not going to worry about it because I'm just really sure that they're just going to throw me off the system. I hope they do don't actually want to be a part of the regular system because it, it doesn't suit me. <laughs> but I presume I could just end my claim if I didn't want to carry on if they did put me on it but I can't imagine they will. She says that what they will probably do when it gets to my end of year they'll want to re-review all my savings to make sure what has changed so for me nothing much has changed I mean the same amount of savings are there I've just moved them around a bit but they may ask to re-see it to make a new decision so I can imagine that being it But we'll see. 
I think the savings. I don't. You said the savings cap was sixteen thousand. If it's not, it's six. So I'm slightly confused. Anyway, that's the update I've got. It's a bit vague, but they were a bit vague. Um, so that's the end of that. Um, hope this update's been interesting. Do um, leave any comments or questions if you're not sure about anything, because I know that some of you are going through this at the moment. Or you're just about to start your claims. So you might find this useful as an ongoing thing. Yeah, so uh, stay in touch. Switch you soon.